I'm saying? Exodus 39, 22 through 23 are also the number of years that Tola and J.R. judged the people of God. Let me show you how the Bible, how intricate it is. Look at Exodus 39, 22 and 23. Tola judged for 23 years and Jair judged for 22. That's how intense the Bible is. I just wanted to show you that. Everything means something in the Bible. It looked like a little passage that was just about Tola and Pua and all this kind of stuff. Look what it means. Look what it's talking about. The green horses are the tolas who operate in true pastorship. What does a true pastor do? Lays his life down for the sheep. They fulfill the pastoral obligation that most pastors are unwilling to carry out. You think the pastors in the soul church are willing to lay down their life for their sheep? I think not. John 10, 14 through 18, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. The tolas are the good shepherds. I lay down my life for the sheep. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay... Look what it says. For this reason, the Father loves me. That's not just about Jesus. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. And no one is taken away from me. No man takes away my life. Mine. But I lay it down on my own initiative. Because I love my father. And because I know that I'm digging in that dirt for a purpose. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it back up again. And this commandment I have received from my father. They are pastoral servants, slaves. Remember I told you? That's what a pastor is supposed to do. They're supposed to be the lowest of all. They're supposed to get up under people and say, come on, we got to go. We got to get up higher. And, and go under you and lift you up. They're true pastors because they're willing to sacrifice their death. But they unleash a spiritual judgment against the soul pastors that have refused to operate in true pastorship. God's true pastorship is a feat achievable only by lowly worm men. Jesus said this to the ones that were weeping for him as he was being crucified. He goes on and you can see it. For if they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it's dry? When everything's going well, if they do all these things, what's going to happen when it's not going well? That's what tribulation is going to be like. After the Tolas die, their souls are sent to a haven of rest. And Jair, light of God's revelation, is hidden away with them. The result is going to be a spiritual civil war that arises. Because J.R. J.R. Judged for 22 years. As this period is completed, the 30 buds, remember I was showing you about the buds, the, the branch, Entola and Jair come forth. Mature sons riding on their ass colts to take over Jerusalem and manifest the light of God's glory. Isaiah 41. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you. Behold, I have made you a new sharp threshing sledge with double edges. We are weapons, y'all. You will thresh the mountains and pulverize them. You, will, you are being crushed so that you can crush the mountains. The mountains are always the Amorites, the evil powers. And it goes on, but you will rejoice in the Lord. You will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. We go through suffering so that we can have the harvest of prosperity. And it will come. That's lasting prosperity. Lasting prosperity. You get, fools get money. Fools get wealthy and they lose it. Fools get themselves tied up in slavery by a nice house and a nice car and all these debts. And then what happens when the money stops coming in? You're a slave to that. But this is lasting prosperity. This is how we build the kingdom of God. This is what we signed up for. Turn it off. This is what we signed up for. To be a worm. But in being a worm, we will have nuclear power to transform the earth. And it's right there. You can see the words yourself. You can see that the Bible interprets itself. We're called to suffer. 
The devil knows one thing, and that is authority. And if you don't have authority, he is going to eat you for lunch. We're called to suffer, y'all. Go lower. Get smaller. Get rid of everything you don't need. That's the message. We're going to overcome, but things are going to be tight. But through much tribulation, we will advance the kingdom of God. You know, this message is going to continue to go on, but God was showing me this week, he was showing me when, when the disciples were put in prison, right after that was a great victory. And when they were beaten, right after that was a great victory. And that's how we advance the kingdom of God. Whatever we're going through, it's rough. But it gives us authority and power of the enemy for the victory. Father, I pray that this message is sealed. I pray that our spirits do not let us go of this message. I do not preach the blessing left-handed gospel because I believe it's a lie. I believe it's a, a tactic of the enemy to make us think that if we're not being blessed, then we're not vindicated by Christ. And I look at the Bible and I see Peter and I see Paul being beaten and all the things that they went through. And it looks to me like their vindication came through suffering. That you really are vindicated by Christ if you are having the devil chase you from one beating to the next. That means I'm really doing good in you, God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not there. I thank you every day that we have an experience what I'm seeing in the spiritual realm coming. I thank you that we have one more day to get lower, to get rid of all the excess, so when the enemy comes, he finds nothing in us but God power, but evangelistic authority, the lowly little worm. The devil doesn't understand that that's the ones that have the power. And he crushes them. And he beats them. And if he knew what he was doing, he would have never crucified Jesus. He boasts that he killed him. That he was a sacrifice for him. That's what he does. He boasts at that to his followers. He says, Christ was a sacrifice for me. He's a liar. He doesn't understand that God uses the foolish things. The tola earthworms and crushes them and he's so in love with those that lay their life down for others no man takes their life but they're willing to lay it down father if there's anyone in here who's still holding on to their life still holding on to anything that they have they need to lay it down at this altar they need to lay down their finances they need to lay down their marriage. They need to lay down everything because if it's not laid down, it doesn't go down and die the death. It will not have resurrection power. So, Father, I ask you to tug on the hearts. If there's anything that we need to let go of and give to you, Father. It's a painful process. Because our soul doesn't like it. Our soul does not want to suffer. But our spirit is willing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It seems like it. But there is a plan. There is an appointed time. to your stuff guys I'm telling you it's going to be it's going to be pride from your fingers